Hey, Amanda, I'm online, if you can hear me. Hello, yes, I can hear you. Sorry, we were trying to fix an audio thing. Okay, cool. Looks like it's all good. All right, we only have one class on, um, so I want to say hello to Priscilla, or Miss Long's class. Um, I think we're going to have more join us throughout the day because I know a lot of classes start at different times at the beginning of the hour. Okay. Um, so we already have one question coming in. She says hello. <laughs> thank you. Um, so thank you, Priscilla, for always already using the question function. Um, as other classes come on, we already have another one joining us. That's great. Um, please don't be afraid to use that question function on the side. Um, just I'll pop in. You'll hear my voice once in a while. Um, Daisha, I'm going to let you go ahead and get started and kind of introduce yourself. Um, but I do want to let you know that I'll kind of jump in as we see those questions roll in. Um, so okay. if you hear my voice, I'll try to wait till there's a pause in the moment. Um, and when we get more of those classes on, I'll just reiterate one more time so that they know that there is that function. Um, but either way, I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Hillsborough Community College. And I'm going to be in the background um, until anybody needs me, basically. So thank you. And it's all yours. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Florida High Tech Corridor and STEM Connect. My name is Daish Bagley, and I am a lab technician at Hillsborough Community College in Tampa, Florida. Currently, we're on the Brandon campus, and I want to welcome everyone. HCC does have five campuses, with the major campus being on the Del Mabry campus in Tampa. Um, but our Brandon campus is very special because it's known for its engineering technology program. And I have Neil with me, who is also a tech in the ET lab. You can say good morning, awesome. Uh, so Neil is the primary advanced technician for this particular lab that we're gonna be sharing with you today. And so I'm gonna ask you guys to um, give us lots of grace and patience today as we give you a virtual tour of our lab. Um, Neil is the specialist, so he's going to talk a little bit about what goes on here as we prepare students to join the manufacturing industry. And the manufacturing industry in Florida, I mean, in fact, in the United States, is growing and blossoming, and it's really cool, um, especially here in Florida, because we have lots of great, high-paying jobs. Um, in a gorgeous state, right, state of Florida, you cannot be living here, it's absolutely wonderful, and people that enjoy building things, making things, fixing things, taking things apart, putting things back together again, automating things, making things autonomous, then manufacturing is a cool, cool career for you. So what we want to share today is just how Hillsborough Community College goes about um, helping our students understand some of the technology that's used in manufacturing and how that technology applies to the real world. So my name is Daish. Please be sure to interrupt with any questions that you might have and Neil and I will take a pause and uh, we'll answer your questions. So Neil's part probably will take about 15, 20 minutes as he shows us around the lab. And then I'll talk to you a little bit about outreach that we do to get more students like you involved in manufacturing careers. And then I have a special robot friend in the back and I'm gonna introduce you to our, our NOW robot. And that's our program for today. All right, I'm gonna let Neil take it over. Hey, Neil. Hey, um, I'd like to start out with is, um, some of the tools that we use for far as helping our students understand what we're trying to help them learn. And one of the things that I've been thinking about in my mind when I'm introducing people to engineering technology, this is applied to That's what it's all about. Um, so what you see in this animation happens um, I'm having a little bit trouble hearing you. Sorry. Uh, yeah, uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, we're I'm trying to get across that manufacturing technology uh, applied physics. That's what it's all about uh, that we use at the school okay so what we were showing was the animation of a hydraulics uh, a pneumatic system which is creating linear motion okay so 
It's pretty basic. It just has to do with compressed air and then using that, applying that force to make create movement. So I'm gonna walk around here a little bit. Um, We're gonna walk over to the uh, machine, you guys. This is a hydraulics machine that I've set up, which... Um, so now you'll probably have to talk a little louder for yeah, the microphone. Okay, so what I wanted to demonstrate with this is what you saw previously was linear motion, and this hydraulic system, it can be used to create rotary motion. And you can see this motor here, I was trying, and I can control the direction, right? So the difference when you know, how is this applied is when you need a great amount of force, you're going to use hydraulics. If you need something clean and fast, you're going to use pneumatics. And get rid of the background noise, and we're just going to walk around here. Um, okay, so I'm going to get you to repeat that, Neil. You said when you need a great amount of force, you're going to use hydraulics. That's correct. But when you need what else? Uh, something that reacts quickly or is in a clean environment, you're going to use pneumatics. And the difference between hydraulics and pneumatics is what? Is actually there is no difference because when I first was introduced to robotics, it was about, okay, um, air is a fluid. Well, they operate, uh, they react the same way as a fluid. And that's something that I had to get across in my mind. And, oh, okay. So, you know, I can see um, the hydraulics and oil or some fluid like water. Um, hey, it's non-compressible, but air itself is behaves as a fluid and that's something I had, you know, kind of working my through in my mind that, oh, okay, that's the way it really operates and uh, that's the physics of things. So uh, just very quickly, um, this is a mechanical drive system we use as a trainer and um, using an electric motor and what we're trying to accomplish uh, with mechanical drives is taking energy and motion and transferring, transferring it from point A to point B. That's what it's all about. Now I may use gears and shafts uh, and that's what these um, and different types of couplings, maybe chains or belts to accomplish that. But this, um, this is what this trainer helps the students to understand and how to apply it. So, so what's a real world example of how this mechanical drive system would be used in industry or a hotel or? Uh, well, um, possibly, uh, well, more so on the fluid side is something, a conveyor belt. Okay, that's the most simple application where this, this would apply. Okay. You have a conveyor belt, you turn it, moves, uh, creates motion in the belt, and move things along. So, um, cool. if I may, we're going to go over here to an area where we have a couple of robots. So I'm gonna... One of the things that uh, okay. that does not look like a robot, are you describing this thing as a robot? How do you know that that's a robot? Um, All right, so the moon is on one end and I'm on another end, so we're trying to show you the robotic arm in motion. The view is kind of things like this thing. How many people are aware about us having legs and, you know, arms, maybe something humanoid kind of sort of? But Mel is saying that this particular machine is a robot. So I'm asking him, why is it a robot? It's an automation. Um, and what this robot in particular does is it demonstrates and starts, students are going to learn, and it's an application that makes it do everything with, uh, so that you can automate these processes. And this is just an example of a pick and place movement. All right. Yes. 
So in my mind, in manufacturing, sometimes it does get a little boring, right? You have these people on assembly lines, and they're just picking up one thing and putting it someplace else and picking up something, putting it someplace else. But what you're saying is those processes of pick and play can be automated. And so a machine can do it without humans becoming bored in the industry. Certainly. The benefit of that is for the people like wear right there on their joints and their muscles. It's a health factor. That's one of the reasons why this can be a benefit, this technology. Nice. Okay. Awesome. Cool. So, here's another robot over here. I was just going to go very simply. There are different ways in which um, I can control this robot. Oh, give me one second. It seems like I lost my connection. Let me see if I can get back to it. Hang on a second. Somehow or another, I moved my mouse. And I lost it, you guys. Give me a moment. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. That was technical error. That's all right. So what I have in my hand is a, is a teach pendant. And by pressing the certain buttons, I can turn this robot in one direction or another, or make the um, I just wanted to demonstrate mostly that there's more than one way to control the robot and most likely um, using this device, this teach pennant, is probably going to be the first thing that someone will use and learn so they can um, step the, the robot through its process of whatever it is they want to, you want it to do for you. Nice. Okay. So some of the things you have to know about the teach pendant is, I'm trying to put it a little bit closer. What, what are all these buttons? What's that on? All these buttons. Yeah. Um, what they will do is convert the electrical signal to um, rotate the motors that are encased in this system. Okay, so basically that's what it technically does. Um, that's how you control it. Cool. So, and so this, this particular robot has different degrees of motion? Yes. Uh, Five. Five that I can probably increase the grip over here. Okay, I'm trying to get a diagram in the see if I can show it. So there is a diagram that sort of shows you all the different ways that this robotic man will move. And so we will look at something, something, play something, grab something, lose something. for just a moment, Neil and I, and Amanda, we're going to see if there are any questions yet about our drive systems or our robotic arms. No, there's no questions yet, but I think when you talk from behind the camera, we lose the voice a little bit. It's just in and out. When you're right in front, though, it seems to be just fine. <laughs> All right, very good. So we're going to try that. We're going to try to position ourselves so that we're right here in front of the camera and the equipment is behind us. All right. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Right, where are we headed now? We're going to move over to uh, the machine. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, first of the CNC machine. Am I there? Oh, that's a laptop that I'm using. Um, there are two types of manufacturing and there's subtractive and additive. You can think of the additive as being the 3D printers. No, that's all the rage. It has been for the last 10 years, whatever. But still, um, subtractive manufacturing or working with lathe and removing material from a base uh, component, it still has applications today. And there's a couple of things which I can show you what has been made on this machine. Um, a little chalice, some taps. Oh, that's 
Yeah, this is this bar of aluminum is how it started, and then we removed material using the lathe and cutters and made all these different things and little chest pieces. Um, kind of this little up with all these. All right. Okay, so what are we looking at? And I know it's going to be a little difficult because I'm like, now I'm back on the right side of the camera. Hang on. But I kind of want to look at the CNC machine and get now to explain to us, like, where are, how does it cut? What's the unit? Is it some sort of braids? And then how does the machine go how to cut? Okay, um, this machine, this type of machine is a lathe type. There's another type. It's called a milling. Um, anyway, this one, what it will do, and we have applications which uh, will automate the process for generating the G and the N code for this. It will, um, so the lathe will turn, the motor will turn the material, and then there's the other component part, this turret, which holds the different bits. Yes. Uh, so if I need to drill a hole or create threads, for example, uh, there are threads here. Now, this machine can create that. It can you can see that it'll drill out a hole and, and then ream it out. It looks like we have besides um, cutting out for hours about this. <laughs> yeah. So that's a pretty cool machine. So what you're saying is back in the day, there would have been some type of expert and that expert would have been really good with using the drill and the- Right, this is all been a manual process, maybe 40 and automated. And actually what we're gonna to go to next is one of the things which you begin All right, it looks like we lost you for just a minute. Are you still there? Can you hear or see me? All right. Well, hello to the two classes that are still on with us. Thank you for joining us. And I'm so sorry for this, but of course, the internet is just completely random connection with um, like webinar is doing something wonky um amanda i think i faded out there for just a moment but we're coming back all right and your webcam is still frozen um can you just try turning it off and turning it back on sometimes okay. it's a simple magic trick <laughs> let me try that Awesome, and we're back. <laughs> and we're back, sorry about that, you guys. Okay, so Neil was saying that uh, he was a drafter, and so, you know, he sort of did everything by hand, but now there are these great applications that you can use. Some are made by Adobe, some are made by SolidWorks. Um, and so you can design on the computer the exact part that you want, send that file to the machine and then the machine takes the code um, translates the code into g code or encode or whatever and then gives you the, the design that you want from a solid piece and so that was extractive that's our cnc machine where you actually um you remove parts you remove uh, layers um, and i think now we're moving over to the additive manufacturing part. And additive manufacturing is your 3D printing. And of course, you still have great software to use to do nice designs. And so we're gonna attempt to show that without losing our connection and allowing you guys to still hear us. All right, Neil, back to you. 
Okay, thank you. Um, we're going to have to turn a little bit. So, okay, so you and I are turning. Okay. Uh, the monitor in into the view, and you can see a part that's been designed here. Okay. 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 I'm coming back to you. Okay. So um, it's easy to manipulate that object in the application and turn it, and you can apply some physical forces to it and do analysis with it. Um, this is a great application. So this is how it works. If you, uh, if you can learn this, you can make some good money. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, um, okay, give us just a moment. Uh, just, we're going to manipulate okay. Okay. Behind us, we have some 3D printers, and I have in my hand that part which was designed. You can see that. So, um, you can think of this as a type of prototyping, if you wish. Um, that proof of concept, okay, you know, I have a great idea, but will it work? You've got to prove it. So this is the easiest way to do it. In the past. Um, so. So we did have a question. Um, they said, what program is that? And we use Autodesk Inventor, um, but they are curious. And I know you guys mentioned SolidWorks, but can you kind of talk about the comparison between SolidWorks and Inventor? I don't know anything about the other application, so I can't answer that question. Okay, uh, I can answer that question. Okay. I've used both SolidWorks and Inventor. And it really depends on the company that you're working for as to which software package they like better. You know how some companies choose Windows versus Mac? Um, it's sort of the same way. Depending on how the company employees were trained, they're going to use those software packages. So the benefit right now with um, Adobe Inventor is that they have really gone into the K through 12 market and they've offered the software for free and they've offered some certifications for free as well. Um, here at Hillsborough Community College, we're using SolidWorks because I, and I think you know would probably agree with this, a lot of the companies that we partner with, they're also using SolidWorks. So we want our students to get certifications on the packages that the companies that we're partnering with are offering jobs. So as far as, um, let me give you an example, like Google Sheets versus Excel. Google Docs versus Microsoft Word. The concepts are the same. So same concepts in Inventor, same concepts in SolidWorks, but your menu systems may look a little different. How you grab an extraction tool, how you grab um, a beveling tool might fall under different menu systems, but the concepts are exactly the same. Does that help, Amanda? That was perfect. Oh, we got a follow-up question. Yep, they said thank you. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> All right, Neil, how are we doing? Um, I guess we're doing, how are we doing for time? Because I have one more station I'd like to go to. We have time, let's go. Okay, so. All right, going way over there. Um, you guys, I want you to know that here, here at Hillsborough Community College, there's lots of great hands-on training. So those of you that, you know, love hands-on opportunities, that's what we offer with these training systems so that you're prepared to go into industry because you've worked on the same package, the same type of system in a training mode that the companies have. All right, so Neil and I are going to try to do this. You guys know that I could never be a weatherman. I can see now how it becomes more difficult to get everything in the screen. Okay, Neil, here we go. So what I want to talk about now are PLCs. It's Programmable Logical Controllers. And really what this does, I, I can give you an example, is and, and something that our stu students learn how to do is program traffic lights. Well, you see it every day, right? The light turns from green to yellow to red and uh, the, the crosswalk signs. That all has to be coordinated and um, 
the applications that we teach our students, they learn how to do that and timers, turning switches on and off and that kind of thing. And so uh, we have two principal applications. One is a simulator and we can simulate a manufacturing environment, uh, which is what I have running behind me right now. And we'll change the camera around to give you a glimpse of that. And then I have another setup which shows how um, two pistons are being driven back and forth. But the key point of all this is I can make changes to the behavior of these systems from a remote location. I don't have to be there right hands on changing wires and moving things around. I can do this from a remote location, change the code, download new code and make it happen. So there's a big money saving, um, but also one of the things that I want to mention is, you know, you can see something like this or maybe someone will show you something and you think that's pretty simple. There's a lot more that goes is involved with it to make it simple, to make it appear simple because it's really probably not because there's a lot of things that happen in the background and this engineering technology is all what's going, it's all about what's going on in the background to make this stuff work. I remember visiting a water, wastewater treatment facility, mm -hmm. and I saw lots of programmable logic computers. I didn't see any people, hardly, I mean, hardly anybody. But once we went to what they call their um, control station, I think is what they called it, like a, a big room filled with computers, and you could see lots of red and green lights and yellow lights, and they were telling me that those programmable logic controllers were the things that were controlling the machines, that cleaned our water, that filtered our water, that pushed the water through to different systems. So is that what we're about to see something? Something similar, similar not to quite that. as elaborate what you were discussing with some that's the environment I came from before. Oh, okay. Uh, so. Cool, I didn't know that. Yeah. Nice. Um, so okay. if you can bring the screen to see this monitor. Okay. So you can't talk yet, I just gotta sort of show it. Let's see if I can get in here. Okay. Looks like they froze again. Let's just give it a minute. Um, the two classes are still on. Um, if you have any questions, please don't be afraid to use that question function on the side. We'll try to get them answered um, in a timely manner. Um, and they are completely offline again, so let's just give them a minute to rejoin us. Um, they should pop back up any minute now. Um, it usually just takes a second. Um, but you can ask any kind of questions about the robotics that are being used, about the difference in the Oh, there we go. I hear can them. you hear us? You may not be able to see us, but can you hear us? We can hear you. Okay, so Neil's going to describe that PLC and ladder logic while I work on the webcam part. Okay. Okay, so it all has to do with logical control, and that's one of the things which, you know, it, you have to think like a machine. Um, that's the way I, it came to me as far as how I can control this. And I don't know if you had noticed, but some of the symbols that were on the left hand side were changing colors and they were changing what that is is changing states from a logical one on to the zero off right so um i just wanted to that, that really so that's probably why in the beginning i thought it was going to be so simple neil because changing something from a zero to a one I mean, how hard can that be? All I got to do is say, yes, I want it on or no, I want it off. Um, but then when you talk about the complexity of knowing when do you want this particular switch on and when do you want this timer on and what about the count bit and the... Right, plus in combination with other things that have to be in sequence, you can't just make it happen without any consideration for other areas of the system and how that affects that. So these things have to be timed and sequenced together um, but that's why we want these guys to start getting into it now. 
because the especially if you're a logical thinker, if you're one of those people that can sort of put things together, you know, we're going to start here and this is where we're going to end up, and you can sort of see it, how it all fits together in the end, uh, you're the type of person that would be great for engineering technology. That, um, that would be your area of expertise because it, it takes that, it takes those logical thinkers to get us there. You guys, I know we can't see you, but you can see us. Can you please give Neil a round of applause from your classrooms because he's been awesome. And he has another tour to do in just a few moments because it's manufacturing day, it's manufacturing day. Um, so Neil's gonna be sharing with some other students who are in the other classroom. And I'm going to now take you guys out with me to the hallway of HCC where we have some made in Florida products that I want to share with you. So thank you, Neil. You're appreciate you. Yes. Thank you. Cool. And thank you guys for your patience. This is our mobile, <laughs> mobile webinar that we have going on today. And I'm walking out into our hallway. Um, Amanda, can you ask students to share with us some of the companies that they may know of that are here in Florida, some of our made in Florida companies, what do they already know? Absolutely. So using that question function on the side, go ahead and send us in some of those companies that you know of that are manufacturing here um, in Florida. And I'll read them out loud. All right, we'll give you a minute. <laughs> yes, that's, a, that's the opening to our engineering technology space here at HCC. And this is our Dean of Student Services. She sits right across the hall. I'm sort of in a hallway. I don't know if you guys can tell I'm in a, like a long corridor, but we are very proud of the companies that are manufacturing in Florida. So we asked them to send us some of their products so that we could showcase them right outside of the ET building. So, so do we have any get this? Uh, they wrote in, um, Ms. Long's class said Lockheed Martin, Boeing, and Textron. <laughs> Lockheed Martin, absolutely. We do have multiple Lockheed Martin facilities here in Florida, and they do everything from manufacturing for um, military uses as well as um, space, aerospace. We get lots of Lockheed Martin and Boeing airplanes, as you know, aeronautics. It's, it's a huge industry in Florida. And a lot of Lockheed Martin facilities are right there on the coast. So if you're in St. Petersburg or if you're um, Broward County or Brevard County, you're right there on the coast. So you get to enjoy the beach and working for a great company. And I say manufacturing because, you know, we are in the manufacturing space here at HCC. I am anyway. Um, but there's everything else. There's finance, there's business, there's graphic arts, there's design. So there's lots of different companies you could work with. And um, what was the other one that was said? Lockheed Martin and which other one? Boeing and then Textron. Textron. OK, they'll have to share with me what Textron is because I haven't heard of that one. Um, let me see if I can show you guys also a couple more. Tropicana. So Tropicana is right up the road from me. And of course, you know, they produce all of our delicious juices and fruit beverages. Um, there's another company called Turbis Tumbler. I'm trying to see if I have a Turbis Tumbler down here. Oh, it's way down at the bottom. I'd have to get on my knees. Um, but Turbis Tumbler is the company that makes those tumblers where you can keep hot things hot and cold things cold, right? So that's Turbis. They're right up the road from us as well. They're in um, Manatee. They're in Manatee County, so Bradenton. Um, there's another company called Florida's Natural. And Florida's Natural also makes delicious juices. We have a huge company called Sun Hydraulics. So Sun Hydraulics is the company that produces lots of our gears and hydraulic systems that you see in the, um, the booms, like um, the electrician, the, the guys who are working on our power lines. And you notice that they're sitting in that little like um, cart kind of thing. And then there's a long ladder type um, mechanism that pulls them and lifts them all the way up right in the air. So that depends on a lot of hydraulics. And so Sun Hydraulics is the main company that produces lots of those smaller pieces. You may not see them, um, you may not see them hands-on like in Walmart or something, but they're in all sorts of other 
manufacturing facility operations. Uh, Pharma Works is another big one. Pharma Works does lots of pharmaceuticals. Oh, hey, have you guys ever gotten those blue envelopes in the mail with all of those coupons? And so the coupons allow you to get deals on, on various items and services. A particular company is called Valpac. Valpac, and I'm trying to see if I can get it in my shop here. Valpac is a coupon company. Um, it's very prevalent here in, where I live. And we've toured that facility, and those coupons are printed by machines, right? Uh, okay, so let's start with the advertisers. The advertisers mail in their advertisements. They email that to a designer. Then there's a designer that makes sure that the advertisement looks okay. But from there, when the designer sends the actual coupon to a printer to be printed, there are no more human interactions with that piece of advertisement. It gets printed by a printer, it gets cut by a robotic arm, it gets placed into an envelope that a, another robotic arm folds and, and seals. And then on a conveyor belt that Neil mentioned earlier, those coupons filled in an envelope, you know, the envelope filled with coupons get sent down to the mailing station. Addresses are placed on them by another robotic autonomous process. Um, and then it gets placed into a nice big bin that the mail carrier picks up and delivers to your home. So people have said that the only human hands to touch the, um, the to touch the coupons are the customer. When you touch the coupon for the first time, that's that's the first time a human being has touched that piece of uh, material. And so it's fully automated. It's Valpac. I thought that was pretty cool. They said that the Textron company does radio communications parts. Okay, cool, awesome. I think the main thing I want to emphasize here is that people always say, oh, everything's made in China, everything's made in China. But actually, that's not true. Not everything is made in China. We produce quite a bit of manufacturing here in the United States. And in the state of Florida, there's lots of manufacturing that goes on all across our state. All right, I'm going to get a little darker than normal because I'm walking through this uh, corridor that doesn't have a whole lot of lighting. And at this point, I'd like to open it up for questions. Um, if you guys Google made in Florida, if you Google made in Florida, then you will find a great website produced by um, one of our partners here at HCC, and that's Flate. And Flate is the company that, or not a company, but an organization that has really promoted manufacturing here in Florida. And not only have they um, worked with partners to make sure that people get jobs, but they've created, created curriculum. And so the curriculum allows classrooms to really um, provide that in-depth knowledge that Neil was talking about before, linear systems and physics and motion and, and all that great stuff. So we're very thankful to Flake for producing that type of curriculum for us. All right, I think I have a few more minutes, Amanda. If I have enough time, I want to try to show our now robot. And we have some, are you guys from the engineering club? You're, you're from the club? All right, say hi to our students. Yeah. So here at HCC, we have engineering clubs. We have all sorts of clubs, but the engineering club is really amazing with their Electrothon car, um, helping out with Science Olympiad, and doing some really cool things. All right, so let's see. Amanda, tell me if you can hear me. Yep, we can still hear you. Okay. So this is the now robot. His name is Brandon, right? And actually, I want to see if I can give myself a little bit more space without losing my connection. This particular classroom that we're in we have uh, summer camps. This is where we do a lot of our robotic summer camps. And students come in, and they're able to program this robot. So this robot called NOW is like a humanoid robot. Lots of gears, lots of um, mechanisms for allowing him to move like a human would. You'll notice he's far different from the robotic arms that Neil was showing us earlier, right? The arms that also have the range of motion. Um, this guy can walk. He can talk. He has a database filled with images, so he can do some uh, image recognition. 
And what I'm going to do now is just try to get him to do a couple of steps for you. This is one of the outreach tools that we use. It's an outreach tool that we use to help young people understand that programming is not difficult. If you start off um, with the basics, programming is, is not hard at all. So remember we were talking about logic and stuff. So if you don't see programming until you're a freshman in college, then okay, it could be a little intimidating. But if you start off younger um, programming and working with machines, working with robots, then it becomes a little familiar, right? And when things are familiar, they're not as intimidating. So what we try to do is use robots like this and Lego Mindstorms. Some of you may have used Lego Mindstorms in the past. We use um, robots like this and Lego Mindstorms to show that programming is the time. Let me show you the language we're using. So there's a little bit of a glare on my screen. I don't know if you guys could see it clearly. But basically, it's picture based. And because it's picture based, it helps our young students to feel comfortable using it. So there's a picture that says stand. And when the student drags a stand picture, the robot stands up. There's a picture of an icon that says say. And the student can put in the words to actually have the robot say different words, right? Because there's speech recognition. But once you're higher up, you know, middle school, high school, then you can start using things like Java and Python and Robot C for your programming languages. It, you don't necessarily have to stick with the picture-based images. I would, do, I would like for Brandon to demonstrate a couple of things that he can do. So if you give me a moment, I'm going to program him and download him so that he does a little dance for you. So let's see here. And we're on a very small table. So please forgive me if I have to adjust Brandon to make sure he doesn't fall off the table. All right, so there's my program. I'm pressing the button to tell Brandon to start doing a dance. And so I have an ethernet cable here that goes from Brandon to my laptop. We could run him. All right, not sure if you heard that. That was Brandon giving a little speech about what he can do. young people to um, think logically, right, about what the machine is supposed to do. So Brandon was doing all the whip and nene moves, right, but there were some sequences that the programmer would have to keep in mind. There are some balance issues, right, some physics that the programmer would have to keep in mind so, so the robot doesn't just tip on over. Um, and, and so it allows us to introduce young people to manufacturing, machinery, logistics, programming, all using one machine. And you don't have to just do this with a now robot that costs $9,000, by the way. You can also do it with other types of uh, robots that are available in stores or on Amazon.com. Um, again, engineering technology degree is what we offer here at Hillsborough Community College, but that degree is also offered at lots of colleges. 
throughout the state of Florida, thanks to um, a group called FLATE. And thank you, Amanda, for putting that website there, madeinflorida.org. Um, and yes, we talk about engineering technology, but there's also other areas um, that you can go into. We are focused on the manufacturing side, um, but there's the mechatronic side, there's the electrical side, there's the computer programming side. Um, it's a two-year program, engineering technology is. And it's hands-on. So yes, you are going to use your math. You're going to use your science. But you're going to use math and science in a way that um, you can see the logic behind it versus why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Right? You use your math and science to really understand uh, the real world functionality. Uh, my name is Gage Bagley. I work here at Hillsborough Community College. I'm part of the outreach for STEM, and I love working with STEM Connect. So if you guys are ever interested in another workshop or another STEM Connect webinar, please, please reach out to Amanda, reach out to Vicki, the STEM Connect folks, and just ask for me with my wonderful little robot here, uh, me and Brandon, and we'll be happy to talk to you guys about manufacturing um, and engineering technology. That's Thank it for me, Amanda. Thank you so much for your time. Um, you do have one question. They want to know what is the best way to learn some of these programming languages? Okay, there is a website called code.org. Code.org. And code.org has lots of different programming languages that you can work with online. You don't necessarily have to have any other equipment other than your laptop or tablet. Um, Khan Academy. K-H-A-N, I want to say is how it's spelled, or either K-A-H-N. Um, Khan Academy also, in addition to providing great tutoring videos, it has some online coding exercises. Um, and so the coding exercises that you're looking for are Java or Python. Um, you're just trying to find something that gives you a little bit of hands-on so that you can start playing around and become more familiar. Awesome. Are there any other last minute questions? All right. Well, I want to go ahead and thank everybody who joined us today. And thank you, Dave, for your time and doing that presentation, walking us through that and showing us a little bit about what it's like to get started into this manufacturing industry. Um, and the shout out to STEM Connect. So just like she said, if you're interested in a follow up or um, your own session on anything related to what we talked about today, please don't be afraid to send STEM Connect a request and we will definitely get you guys connected again. Um, but with that said, thank you so much for your time and happy manufacturing day. Happy manufacturing day! <laughs> Thanks, Amanda. Bye, you guys.